What about the step of including time as just another dimension? So combining space and time, is that a simple mathematical leap as Minkowski suggested? It's certainly not simple, actually. Um, it's, a, it's a profound insight. That's why I said I think we should give Minkowski more credit than we do. You know, he's the one who really put the finishing touches on special relativity. Again, many people had talked about how things change when you move close to the speed of light, uh, what Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism predict and so forth, what their symmetries are. So people like Lorentz and Fitzgerald and Poincaré, there's a, a story that goes there. And in, in the usual telling, Einstein sort of puts the capstone on it. He's the one who says, all of this makes much more sense if there just is no ether. It is undetectable. We don't know how fast. Everything is relative, thus the name relativity. But he didn't take the actual final step, which was to realize that the underlying structure that he had invented is best thought of as unifying space and time together. I honestly don't know what was going through Minkowski's mind when he thought that. That I'm not sure if he was, you know, so mathematically adept that it was just clear to him, uh, or he was really struggling it and he did trial and error for a while. I'm not sure. I mean, do you? For him or for Einstein, visualize the four-dimensional space, try to play with the idea of time as just another dimension. Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, we, of course, make our lives easy by ignoring two of the dimensions of space. <laughs> so instead of four-dimensional space-time, we just draw pictures of one dimension of space, one dimension of time, the so-called space-time diagram. But, you know, I mean, maybe this is lurking underneath your question, but even the best physicists will draw, you know, a, a vertical axis and a horizontal axis, and they'll go space, time. But deep down, that's wrong, <laughs> because you're sort of preferring one direction of space and one direction of time, and it's really the whole two-dimensional thing mm -hmm. that is space-time. The more legitimate thing to draw on that picture are rays of light, are light cones. From every point, there is a fixed direction at which the speed of light would represent. And that is actually inherent in the structure. The division into space and time is something that's easy for us human beings. What is the difference between space and time from the perspective of general relativity? It's the difference between X and Y when you draw axes on a piece of paper. So there's really it's no a, difference? There is almost no difference. There's one difference that is kind of important, which is the following. If you have a curve in space, I'm going to draw it horizontally because that's usually what we do in space-time diagrams. If you have a curve in space, you've heard the motto before that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. If you have a curve in time, which is, by the way, literally all of our lives, right? We all evolve in time. So you can start with one event in space-time and another event in space-time. What Minkowski points out is that the time you measure along your trajectory in the universe is precisely analogous to the distance you travel on a curve through space. And by precisely, I mean, it is also true that the actual distance you travel through depends on your path, right? You can go a straight line, shortest distance, and curvy line would be longer. The time you measure in space-time, the literal time that takes off on your clock also depends on your path. But it depends on it the other way. So that the longest time between two points is a straight line. And if you zig back and forth in space-time, you take less and less time to go from point A to point B. How do we make sense of that? The uh, difference between the observed reality and the objective reality underneath it? Or is objective reality a silly notion? given general relativity. I'm a huge believer in objective reality. I think that objective reality objective You're reality, is real. Yeah. Um, but I do think that people kind of are a little overly casual about the relationship between what we observe and objective reality in the following sense. Of course, in order to explain the world, our starting point and our ending point is our observations, our experimental input the phenomena we experience and see around us in the world. But in between, there's a theory. <laughs> there's a mathematical formalization of our ideas about what is going on. And if a theory fits the data and is very simple and makes sense in its own terms, then we say that the theory is right. And that means that we should attribute some reality to the 
entities that play an important role in that theory, at least provisionally until we come up with a better theory down the road.